everybody. 6.50 Eve here. And today I'm able to ride my H2 for the first time after getting the Goal Motors ECU flash and um, acrophobic exhaust installed. And I must say, boy, what a difference uh, this bike has made since having that done. Uh, the throttle is much more responsive, as if it weren't already, and um, <laughs> the bike just wants to go fast more eagerly than before, you know? Um, the restrictions, all of the restrictions have been removed on this motorcycle. Um, I'm no longer using a uh, butterfly valve uh, connected to the exhaust, uh, so that's cool. Uh, the O2 sensors are still installed. My good buddy, Some Fun, uh, brought his H2 uh, to Don Ghoul, uh, and we both have the same setup. Same exhaust, air filter, and that's pretty much all we changed. We're not using a power commander as it's not needed. Don Ghoul also uh, tuned our bikes to this exhaust. And uh, he did a fantastic job. I can't speak highly enough about Ghoul Motors. You know, over the years I've heard great things about him and his company. Um, he was one of the first people to flash the uh, current generation 2011 and above uh, uh, ZX-10. And so he unlocked a lot of power with that bike because it was heavily restricted. Don Ghoul, how long am I have to wait for this damn train? This ridiculous. Don Ghoul uh, did a great job with flashing that ECU, so I trusted him to flash the ECU on the H2. Don invested a lot of money uh, into flashing this ECU. He purchased an ECU from Kawasaki several months ago and started working on the flash. And all he needed to complete that process was for someone to deliver uh, him an H2, in which case my good buddy Some Fun did last week. And I, uh, Don, was the, I was the second person that had their ECU flash with Don, and my ECU uh, mirrors that of Some Fun. I've spoken with Some Fun, and he also agrees that the bike is fantastic since having the flash. Um, as you see right now, I'm idle, and uh, the bike is totally calm, totally, totally fine, idling at about 1100 RPM right now, um, which is cool, and. Um, you know, it's just really fast. Uh, I lost a lot of weight on the bike from installing the exhaust uh, because the uh, stock exhaust with the catalytic converter, there, the train is finally coming. I don't know why they shut this down way early. Well, <sighs> yeah, so at any rate, what the hell was I saying? Yeah, the bike lost a lot of weight. Uh, the catalytic converter and that disgusting stock exhaust canister combined weighed a little over 30 pounds. That's a lot. That's a lot of weight to have shed. And I believe this bike, uh, wet, weighed 529. So with the exhaust and a few other things that we did uh, to reduce weight, this bike is currently at about 493 pounds, which isn't bad. Um, no, it's not as light as my Pentagalli. No, it's not as light as my HP4, but I can appreciate and respect the uh, extra weight that comes with this bike, you know, because when I'm launching it, um, it is, you know, it launches much, much easier. It stays uh, planted on the ground uh, much easier because of that extra weight. Now, let's get to the good stuff. Uh, Don Ghoul put my good buddy Some Fun's bike on the, e on the dyno after he tuned the ECU. Well, he did it, he dynoed it stock first. Stock, this bike, or Some Fun's bike, which is the exact same as this bike, made 198 horsepower on Don Ghoul's dyno. After Don was done unlocking the bike, re removing uh, restrictions and things like that, some Fun's bike made 243 horsepower on Don Ghoul's dyno. That's a net gain of about 45 horsepower. That's absolutely fantastic. And so I expect the same numbers or similar numbers from this bike, albeit it will be on a different dyno. It won't, uh, I won't have an opportunity to go to uh, Don's uh, location, which is near Philadelphia, which is about seven hours from me. 
I won't have an, an opportunity to go out there and dyno it, but I will dyno this bike at a local uh, dyno station uh, very soon, and I will most certainly post those results. So stay tuned for that. Now, that train has gone. Why in the name of heaven are we not moving? Stay tuned. I think we're about to start moving now. The bike sounds fantastic, by the way. It's not too loud, but it's just loud enough. And, you know, the good thing about Don's Flash is that this bike has 243 horsepower or so, and it's still rideable at, you know, low to moderate speeds, uh, everyday traffic type of speeds. This bike is still very much doable. You know, some bikes with all that power, you know, they want to stall out. They don't, uh, you know, like right now we are, uh, Right now we're standing still and the bike is just fine. It's not upset. It's not, uh, the, the RPMs aren't jumping and dancing, you know? And it's almost like uh, it was before the flash. Now, I haven't put it on the highway yet to uh, feel the difference, but I will momentarily. This bike has much improved since the reflash. Acceleration, throttle control, much improved. Throttle response. It's more snappy. Ridiculous. I can't really do too much. And it also produces a popping sound. <laughs> like the BMW when you engage the quick shifter. I like that. This is fourth gear. That's a great pull in fourth gear. Fourth gear. Wow. I don't really have space to try that again, or with third gear, but I'm impressed by that. Are you? There's the skyline of lovely Cleveland, Ohio. We're on the way to the Rock Hall to meet some of the Cleveland Fast Boys. And uh, go on a little cruise here. Uh, I've had a few moments to ride the bike since having the gold ECU flash and the bike is brilliantly fast. It's almost like a sleeper fast because you could be cruising minding your own business in six gear like I'm doing now, but then when you want to, uh, you know, get some power, pass a car or something like that, you get that power instantly, even in six gear. So I'm very pleased with that. But the bike, it can still be very civilized. There's a progressive field where the Cleveland Indians play baseball. There's more of the downtown area. I'm not sure how much the GoPro is capturing of all this. But it's not a bad looking downtown. I mean, we don't have a lot of skyscrapers. We don't really need them. Cleveland is the type of town where um, a lot of jobs are spread out in the suburbs, you know? So not a lot of people work downtown. And that all happened like in the late 80s, early 90s. Uh, an event took place which they call Urban Sprawl where a lot of companies reloaded, relocated their headquarters from downtown Cleveland out to the suburbs and thus people moved from Cleveland into suburbs. And they're, uh, they're aggressively trying to get people to come back into the downtown area now. They are revitalizing it all over the place. They just put up a high, a high, uh, a very high scale 
a grocery store called Heinen's. Just opened up in downtown Cleveland, so that's nice. But uh, they, they're building luxury condos all over the place in downtown. But then you have abandoned buildings like that, you know? Which I'm assuming is abandoned, but that could be a, you know, a loft style residence. But this is the infamous Dead Man's cor Curve. I repeat, the infamous Dead Man's Curve. Where, you know, you're just cruising on the highway, and then all of a sudden, the speed limit goes from 55 to freaking, uh, you know, 25. Like that, you know? And if you don't negotiate these corners, or this curve, right, you'll be flat on your arse. Or worse, whoa, or worse. Man, this bike likes to spin the tires, but that's to be expected with all the horsepower, huh? Cleveland Brown Stadium, the Science Center, are to the left, over there. Ah, some of the fast boys are here. Those aren't the fast boys. We don't ride katanas. But that is Slasher and and uh, Stunnerway. <laughs> hey, Mr. Slasher! So we're down here at the Rock Hall, and uh, just a couple of us actually showed up. The rest of the fast boys are who knows where. But uh, we're going to try to get some riding in and do some testing and see what this bike is all about since we had the Goal ECU flash. I've already discovered that it's extremely fast but still smooth. But we're going to put on the road and see how it fares up with Mr. Slasher and his 2015 S1000. Double R. Yeah, and then we got Stunnerway that has nitrous on his jigsaw. Where, where are the bottles at? Man, they, they couldn't fill them. They couldn't fill them? No, they didn't have the right fitting. They had a right fitting. Wow. Couldn't get wow. That was mad as fuck, too. I bet. I was so sick, I was ready to go the fuck home. Mac was like, come on, let's go. <laughs> Okay, so that's what we're up to today. So, uh, thank you. Yeah, nice jacket and boots to match. <laughs> you can't go wrong with black, right? Nope. Right. Ah, there we go. All right, stay tuned. <laughs> That was just Mustang Dame that I annihilated. So what do you think, Mustang Dame? Bad. Bad <laughs> Second race is definitely closer than the first one. Mm-hmm. You did a couple underneath my belt. <laughs> okay, we'll try it again. Yeah, but for now, your record with this uh, H2 is what? 0-2. Uh, 0-2. Thank you for being the man. So this is the end result after a race with Mustang Dame. The tire is freaking getting, sh oh, it's hot, and it's getting shredded. Wow. And if you look at everyone else's tire, you look at Mac here, who was just riding with me, no one else's tire is getting shredded to smithereens. That shows you the power of the Kawasaki H2. Don Gould did a fantastic job flashing this ECU. This bike has every bit of 243 horsepower as 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 advertised but it's smooth the power comes when you or when you dial it up it's just not uh, what I would call a suicide cycle which is um, 
a power just there uncontrollably. Um, you know, you have to dial into it to get that power coming. But when you do, my good friends, that power comes out like a sledgehammer, like a locomotive, like Superman after smoking crack cocaine. That's how this bike is. <laughs> no, I don't mind. Oh, the H2? Man. Yeah. Oh, I can take a picture of both you guys next to it if you want. No, I want him to take that. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> nice. There you go. Oh, I do something like this. Yeah, you know. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> nice. Okay, now can you take our picture? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, that thing's sweet, man. That's Thank you. Sweet. Uh, I got it about a month ago, but I just got it modified, finished modifying it last week, so this is my first ride since I've had it modified. <laughs> Thank you. They don't. That's what everyone agrees. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> One, two, got it. Okay. You're welcome, guys. My pleasure. Yeah. We got one of our Cleveland's finest hanging out with us, our good buddy Frank, that rides with us. Stopping down to say hello. Run some plates. Uh, check for warrants. Nah, I'm joking. Frank's too cool to do that. And his partner over there is pretty cool too. His partner originally rolled up thinking that Frank needed backup. And you know what that means when Cleveland police tries to bring backup, you know. We thought we'd expect to see about another 15 squad cars and a helicopter, but no, it's all good. Uh, Don Gould did a great job with the ECU flash. I definitely suggest for every H2 owner to get their ECU flash with Don Gould. Um, he basically took the bike from 198 horsepower at the wheel to 243 horsepower at the wheel. He removed all of the restrictions. Uh, we disconnected the butterfly valve. We are still, we still have the uh, stock O2 sensor connected. As you can see right there. And, uh, you know, Don Gould's Flash didn't make the bike unrideable. It made it so that it has more power, more horsepower, more torque. But when you need it, when you, when you dial it up, you can still ride the bike civilized. It still idles at 1,000 RPM. It's not like a crazy 243 horsepower bike that's just out of control. Let's just say that. And so for that, I'm very pleased with his work. And I will continue to promote Don Ghoul Motors. The website is in this uh, uh, video, and it's also in the description. Don Ghoul Motors is the place to go to get your H2 ECU flashed. It's the place to go to get your ZX-10 ECU flashed. It's the place to go for everything, okay? Just browse his website and enjoy it, you know? But he does great work. Yeah, Frank's a big dude. I'd hate to get into a tussle with him. Hmm. But at any rate, I like the way the exhaust is changing colors. Um, HMF Engineering installed this exhaust. It's a custom uh, exhaust. We, uh, you know, HMF made a cut right uh, in front of the uh, where the stock catalytic converter used to be. They got rid of that. They installed an Acropovic um, titanium midpipe and the Acropovic ZX-10 um, exhaust canister was installed. And then the stock bracket uh, didn't fit. It was too long. It came out too far. And this is a shorter pipe than the uh, huge uh, stock exhaust. So HMF made this custom bracket and powder coated it. And I think it looks absolutely brilliant. Right. Another plane taking off. <laughs> no, not yet. He's working on one. He's been working on ten of them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not getting on a Harley. I'm not getting on a Harley.
So please, by all means, stay tuned for more videos. And for all of my new subscribers, thank you for subscribing. And um, But I want to make a note, please don't expect to see me motor vlogging and making videos solely on the H2. I do have other bikes that I enjoy riding and that I believe are significant to the motorcycle industry. The, um, the 1199 Panigale R is a great bike, I love it. I'm going to be doing motor vlogs on that one. And the BMW HP4 is also a great bike that I love as well. And so I will be riding those bikes from time to time. So please, uh, if you just came for the H2, uh, be warned. Oh, there's a plane taking off from Burke Lakefront Airport. A private Learjet for a very wealthy executive. Uh, so please, stay tuned for more videos. Thank you for viewing. And uh, ride safe.